Okay, let me start the webinar. Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sibram of InnoIndices.com. Today, I have given, during the, the Japanese session, the Asian session live market analysis webinar and explain to you how exactly the market is expected to behave for Thursday and Friday and also explain what sort of tradings we can do it. Then during that of the European session, again, I made the analysis of the market before you during part one of the tracking the Forex market together webinar and also committed some positions. So now I am going to present the part two of the webinar between 14 and 14.45 GMT. And during that time, we'll try to find out how exactly from that of the European session, the market has behaved and during the start of the US session and 30 minutes past the start of the US session, how the market is making the moves. So after understanding the type of moves they are doing it, then it is easy for us to find out what sort of trades we can do it. And already we have committed some positions. What happened to those positions and how exactly we can handle it? All those things we can see. Now, as I explained during part one, we can track the market. We can use the forecast, whatever it is. The trading strategy is vital because once we use the trading strategy, we'll be able to definitely manage the money. And we see that we don't incur unlimited loss. And always we try to restrict the loss. And instead of the stop, if we try to use the hedging order, then we minimize the loss to almost nil and try to earn during every move of the market so that consistently we will be able to hold the position and make profit from the other market. This webinar I give once a month and it's a twin webinar. And so here I focus more on the trading strategy. Since I was focusing on the trading strategy, I want to explain how the hedging has to be handled. So during that of the European session, I took some positions and they're all hedged. Many of them were hedged. So I wanted to explain what happened to those trades and how exactly we can handle it. Now, early European session, I noticed that they are actually making the lower level consolidation. And when you look into that of the forecast, they were expected to swing and form up during that of the European session and then swing and drop during that of the year session. So even though the forecast was telling that they are going to form up, but the market reading was telling that they stayed below that of the initial low for more than 30 minutes from the start of the session. So when they stayed below that of the initial low for more than 30 minutes from the start of the session, and they are likely to continue that move on the downside. But after two hours, what happened? They started gaining the levels. So the downside move was a yeah, extended move on the downside. Then subsequently for the 1230 GMT data, they just gained the levels in the case of Hero and GBB. Now let us try to find out from that of the initial lows and the highs, how exactly they have deviated the market. So that we'll be able to understand that how we are taking the trading decisions and when the trading goes wrong, how exactly we can use the hedging strategy and try to earn money. That is what I wanted to explain. So here you find that initial low in the case of Euro was 33.56 and the high was 33.67. And then they've gone above 33.67 and they went up to 70 during that of the European session and just three pips and came down to 62 level. And they were hovering around and came down 33.49, a small downward stop. In. And there was a question also during that of the webinar that when they have not increased the spread to more than 40 pips, can we commit the position? I told them that we are not supposed to commit the position when the spread between the high and the low is not more than if it is less than 40 pips, 
then it is better to wait for them to increase the spread between the high and the low. And near that of the new high, we can take the sell position. But still, I wanted to show how exactly our trading strategy can help us respective of the place or the level at which we have taken the position. So today we'll be able to see how respective of the forecast or irrespective of the market reading, our trading strategy is going to finally help us. Because for many of the traders, this is going to be the condition. They may follow X forecast and try to take the position. The going might be good for one or two days. And the third time when they come in, then the forecast can go wrong and the market can move against their expectations. In the event, there is no point in blaming the forecast. Instead, we have to use the trading strategy and come out of the position. And there comes the skill set because ultimately we should be in a position to book profit irrespective of the market moves. So in such a scenario, you get rid of the market fear. At the worst scenario, you might be hedged and still we can handle the hedge. I will explain to you afterwards how I handle the hedge. Now, in the case of GBB, they just breached the initial low, came down to 66.58. The initial high was 66.92. Okay, and they stayed below around 66, uh, 65 and 62 level. So I took a sell position because more than 30 minutes from the start of the session, they stayed below that of the initial low in order to make an extended downward move or an intentional downward move. But what happened? They just quickly gained the level, went above that of the initial high, 66.92, went up to 66.97, started making the slide. Similarly, in the case of Euro, the European session high was 1.3370. They went above that about 38 pips. 34.08, they went up to and started making the slide and now around 33.97. So when they increase the spread during such time, if we take a sell position, then we will be in the money. But still, what happened? When I had taken the low level sell and kept the hedge order, when it was hedged, I just viewed whether the hedging is making profit or not for 30 minutes. And if it is not making 10 to 30 minutes, if it is not making profit, you have to close it, as I told you. Then, in the case of USDN, that 102.40 was the initial low, and 66 was the initial high. They have breached it the high, but came down and breached the low. And during that of the European session, when we are watching, but they are not gone below that of 102.40 for 30 minutes from the start of the session. So there was a scope that they will gain the levels from there as a false move they could make and then gain the level. But when Eero and GBB were making a stop and around 9 GMT data release, what happened, USDN also made about 5 pips down the stop and, and then went up. And for 1230 G GMT data, they just made another 4 pips downward stop and, and gone up to that of the 102.40. So they just ultimately came from the, the initial low by about nine pips, and now they are started gaining the level zero. And GPB they started losing the level as expected by the other forecast. Then, in the case of CHF, 9074 was the initial low, and 1984 was the initial high. They breached the low and came down to 9035, and they are just holding around 9040. And they have to come up and go to 1984. But actually, they just made an upward stop and start making the slide, increase that spread, and gone below that by about 29 pips. And then they are recovering it slowly now. And so, for first 30 minutes from the start of the session, that is 1330 GMT, the European year session starts. For 30 minutes, they are not breached the new high or the new lows which indicates that they are going to reverse the market. Then for the new session, we can straight away take the sell near that of the new high and see that we are in the money and try to keep stop at entry and do it. But I am holding already the positions. So I have to explain to you that how exactly in hedged position we'll be able to put profit rather than simply 
take easy trades and try to explain to you. Now, in the case of USD CAD, 1.0913 was the initial low. They came down there as a downward stop. And, and, and we also noticed that they've been holding for more than two hours below that of 1.09. And they had been holding around 0, 1.0907 level for a, more than 30 minutes. I was explaining to you that they are likely to make a downward move. Probably they will try to take the stops below that of the psychological level 1.0900 and then come up. So that is what they are done. So once we read it, then somebody asked when they can take the position. I told them early or the late session. When the good moves are happening, quick moves are happening in the market, we can take the position. During the, the late session, 12.30 GMP, during the data relief, if you take up a position, we will be in the money. Okay. Then Australian dollar and 92.88 was the initial, 93.10 was the initial high. They went above that and formed 93.27 and started coming down still above that of the initial high high and they are likely to come down since the new high they have reached in first 30 minutes of the start from the start of the u.s session so we are done the market reading now we have seen the forecast the forecast says that the market is expected to drop after the firming up move during the, the european session and the market reading also we confirm that they did not breach the new highs in the case of euro and GBP for 30 minutes from the start of the session. And also the new lows in the case of USDM, USDCH, and also the new low in the case of Canadian dollar, they are not breached, and the new high, they are not breached for 30 minutes from the start of the session. So when you come across a situation of that nature, what we do we use the derived forecast and we use the market reading and also the trading strategy. That is, keep 30 pips away from that of the position, the entry stop or the hedge order. And then subsequently, we try to move or keep the stop at entry if the position is making about 25 pips profit and remove the hedging order. In such a situation, we use the hedging instead of a stop. And also we use the hedging for trading. So that is what I explained it during the European session. So when I taken the positions during the, the European session, and now when you look at it, they are all really lower level sales and higher level buys. Okay. So that is how from time to time it will change. So we should not become perturbed. Instead, we have to use the uh, the trading strategy and come out of the positions with profit. Now, after taking their buy position in the case of CHR, 9076 with the stop and they still stop at 9046. They came down to 9046, but afterwards they are not gone below for 10 to 30 minutes. So I closed it with one pip loss and kept under the hedge order at 9020. Actually, we can keep 30 pips up below because the market moves are very sluggish. So I just kept about 20, 23 pips, uh, more than 23 pips as the hedge order, 90, 20 as a sell stop. And they came down to that of 90, 35 and come to that of 90, 41 now. So slowly they will gain the level above that of 90, 46. Then I will try to move my hedge order to 90, 46. Then once they go above that of 9076, I will try to move the hedge order to 9066. Then once you comes to 9090, then I'll keep stop at entry in the buy position and remove the hedge order. So since I use the hedging, what will happen? At the maximum, I can close the hedging with one or five pips loss because I am just going to close it in a matter of about 10 to 30 minutes. Then they won't if the hedging is making profit continuously for 30 minutes. Then what I will do, I'll keep stop at entry in the hedging and wait for the market to come down and close my hedging at stop at entry without a loss. And then I immediately keep another hedge order about 20, 30 pips above that of the uh, or away from that. 
and then subsequently when the market moves in my favor i start trail the hedge order so here you find that we don't develop any sentiment we only depend upon the trading strategy at a given time we only risk 30 pips okay when i risk 30 pips and it has hedged me and i found that hedging is not making profit there is no point in holding the hedging i just close it with one or two pips or five pips loss and keep another hedge order to limit the risk and move the hedge order to the original hedge level to start with once they start making the move in my favor so similarly in the case of jbb and you know that around 9:30 gmt when they made an upward stop and exactly it came to 1966 93 and hedged me started holding there with one pip uh, lower and did not breach the new high for more than 10 minutes i closed it with one pip loss and kept another hedge order and they just gone above that another four pips and started making the slide 1230 gmt they just gone another four pips about and start gain, dropping the level so my hedging order i can just move it now it is around 6681 and i am in about 18 pips loss once they start going below that i will be in the money and i will keep stop at entry so when i use the hedging even though it was a bad entry I find that I am able to earn money from such trades. I am not stopping it out out of fear. And also when they make quick moves, I don't become a prey. So once you eliminate the market fear, you find it is hardly about 10-15 pips they just made the stop and it is not a big bullish upward move for 100 pips. How you can find out? With the help of the net changes. During that of the European session, I explain to you except the gbb the rest of the currencies were showing the net change of less than 10 pips from that of the yesterday u.s session close till that of the start of the european session they just made only consolidation and for that of nine gmt data even though it was considered as less important they just made about 20 20 30 pips stopping then they started holding it for more than 30 minutes, it happened to be the extended move and started making the downward move, but they did not breach the initial low, initial high. Then again, 1230 GMT, when the US data was out, it was slightly uh, less than expected. They started making an upward move, but started making the slight move. So their intention is to make the downward move. And they just pretend as if Euro and GBB are expected to gain levels, but they intend to make for the drop. So they are not giving those who had taken the buy positions at higher levels to book profit. So in the process, such traders will go in for an average in trading. Every drop, they will try to add more buy position. Later on, when they make one distress downward move by month end, all the long holders will come for liquidation and thinking that Euro and GBP will go to hell on the downside. And after liquidating, they find that they are the only foolish trader liquidated the long positions and then the market reversed. This is what happened most of the time, you know. And there is also a saying in the market, when the strongest bull turns bearish, the market reverses. So never have any sentimental attachment to that of any currencies. They are tradable ratios. And so when you are taking a sell position and try to keep the hedge order to limit the risk, or when I take a buy position, try to keep the hedge order to limit the risk. And when the move is in your favor, try to book profit. When the move is against you, when it is hedged, handle the hedge. So without even a forecast, you can simply take a decision. Okay, near the high, I will take the sell position. Near the low, I will take a buy position. But the overall market trend appears to be downward. So I will focus more on the selling buy trade rather than buy and sell trade. Because buy and sell trade, I might be able to get about 30 pips or 35 pips profit. But if I miss out of greed when the profit was shown, still I am not booked to 25 to 30 pips, then they will show the loss in my buy positions. And you know the high level buys, 
and anybody who has taken the higher level buys there were pullbacks but if they fail to book profit or not get the stop at entry their positions might be making loss for several days and this is what we should avoid so overall trend we have to understand and my forecast i developed it mainly to get the overall forecast of the market during this month and the during the week and find out how exactly we can take positions in the market then afterwards in the case of yen and it was trading above that at the initial low under 2.40 so i took a buy position but they are not hedged and in the case of euro went up to 3396 and stopped that was the point they just went up to and afterwards they started making the slide so they did not breach that high for more than 30 minutes i just closed it and later on i kept the hedge order but during 1230 gmt data they went up to 3408 another 12 pips gain and started coming down below that 3396 that high they set during that of the european session and in the case of was they went up to 9327 but 9340 was the hedge order 9310 was the initial high i take on the sell and still they are holding and showing about some pickle last and it is expected to come down slowly during this particular session so what do you find actually more than the forecast if you focus on the trading strategy when the position is hedged and we just handle the hedge effectively i told you that when you are hedged you have got the great opportunity of following the market session spammings and also the type of moves they are trying to do it now we are in the us session so 1330 gmt it starts up to 14 gmt is the early session they are not breach the high or the lows in the numerator highs and the denominator the lows that means they stop cutting the new high they want to reverse the market and 14 gmt up to 14 gmt if they don't breach them then they are not likely to breach the highs or the lows during that session so slowly they will reverse during that session and we can watch and try to keep stop at entry and try to book profit by late session so that is what we need to do it in order once you understand the session timings because the early and the late sessions they handle the majors and during the mid sessions they handle the crosses so that we need to follow so that once you take the position and if it is not making about 2 3 pips or 5 pips profit we should not become impulsive or we should not lose our patience and close the position simply look for the late session move you will be able to really book profit and you know that today the forecast was the early session from the low to the high okay you know how exactly by 12:30 gmt they went up to the high so swing near that of the low then mid session holding the late session they started breaching the initial high and gone above in the case of numerator and reversed it during that of the year session so <coughs> what you need to understand is during that of the early and the late sessions either you can take or close position in the case of majors and during the mid sessions you can take positions or close the position in the case of the crosses then always keep in mind they have to increase the spread between the high and the low for more than 40 pips then it is easy for us to book profit in such trade otherwise what happens our holding time increases that is what happened now when i have not taken the positions during that of the uh, after the formation of 40 pips spread i find that i am holding the position what i had taken during the european session till the us session the best way of trading is try to close the position within the session now that we need to find out what sort of moves they are doing it and you if you notice carefully between 13 to 14 1330 to 14 gmt they went closer to the other high but not breached the high and come down 
that means it is a false move. They pretend as if they are going to rise during start of the European session, and they simply started making the slide. So they always give that impression to the other trader the market might move in one direction, but they make the move opposite direction, and that is nothing but a cunning strategy. Yeah. And you know that uh, when you walk along the subways and also isolated places, somebody might voluntarily come to you and say that, okay, I'm going to help you. And so there is something which has fallen on your shirt. Can I help you in removing it? Then you look into that of the dirt which is formed in your shirt on the back by the time you flex your purse. So the same way, the players also pretend as if Euro and GBB are to gain the levels, but later on, they simply make the draw. So what is visible is not true in the market. That we need to understand. So the market might give a bullish feel, but it might suddenly reverse. And the market might give a bearish feel, but it will reverse. But you know, quick moves are false moves, and slow moves are the intentional move. That is how we'll be able to differentiate which way they are going to take the market. So intentional move is the one which is a slow move with which we'll be able to identify in what direction they are going to take the market. They cannot cheat us. Then they do during the mid-session the swings. So this is what the trading strategy explanation I just explained to you. If the position is hedged, how exactly we can just go in for uh, handling the hedge. And that is watch for 10 to 30 minutes. And if the hedging is not making profit, close it with one to five to loss and keep under the hedge order until you are able to uh, see profit in your position. We can continue to uh, hold the hedging. Still, you are able to see profit in your original position. You can continue to keep the hedge order. Once you see profit in your original position, about 15 to 25 pips, you can keep stop at entry and remove the hedge order. That time, you'll find the hedging is acting as a limiting factor. So you don't take unlimited risk. You only block a certain amount of money. That is about, in a standard lot, about $300 or 30 pips. And... You are not taking unlimited risk. And if you use the stop, what happens? The stop will take away the money. But if you use the hedging order, it will block your money. And some may argue that either block or losing the money is the same because ultimately, which is lost from that of the equity. But it is lost from that of the equity. But you hold the position to regain. But if you use the stop and the original position is closed, you have to re-enter into the market. And after the last, mostly as human, we find we hesitate to enter into the market. We look for a better opportunity to enter and we miss several opportunities until we become uh, or we get reduced to them with the market fear. So the market fear is the one, the human psychology plays a vital role, especially with regard to the greed and the panicness. So when the going is good, we simply, out of greed, don't use the trading strategy and lose money. And when you take a position and the market goes against, out of panicness, we become stunned. We do not know how to control the risk. And later on, find that it becomes a bigger risk and the danger comes to the equity. Then in a hurry, we try to close the position. In such process, what happened? We bring in enormous damage to the of the equity just because of fear nobody is putting the hand through the computer and say that come on you just liquidate your long position of the lower level of the drop or going for a short covering the players make quick moves and automatically you do it you are being mesmerized and you try to do on your own such calamities so ultimately who is responsible for it we are responsible for making the losses and not the players. The players are doing their duty to earn their money. Even though they use the cunning practice, but they are earning their money. So earning the money in the business 
always you find cunning. Suppose somebody is buying a product for about $10 and always you will try to sell it for $12 or $13. And you will give a very convincing talk and give the make the markup or the profit and then sell it to you. And you cannot say that he is cheating. So in business, in finance market, you find such act is considered as the smartness and not cunningness. But actually, when you are a trader, you have to identify that they are all cunning moves so that you don't get trapped. That is why I use the word cunning. Otherwise, they are earning their money and they have to necessarily make the moves in a market to make their money. Otherwise, for such huge uh, billions and billions of dollars, if they want to make money, they cannot deposit the money in any bank and no bank will give interest for them. And the inflation is such that it will not match automatically, they will lose their top slot positions. So when they are richest of the richest in the world, and when they don't match the inflation, and also if they don't earn more than that of and compete with that of inflation, their money will apparently appear lesser if it is not growing. So they have to struggle for that. And you know that after reaching billions and billions, they increase their lifestyle and they find it extremely difficult to come down in their status. And you know that amount of ego they have and also the complex they develop suddenly if the uh, money is lost. So they do not want to take the risk at the same time. They want to earn money for deploying billions and billions of dollars in the market. And they use the banks as the the hand or the equity handling uh, hand for that of such richest people. And they try to make the moves in the market and artificially create the demand and artificially create the supply. So we know very well about the demand and supply, which is making the moves in the market. But the players create simply artificial demand and artificial supply using some triggers in the market. Then we have to go in for either way trade only. There is, that is the only way with which we'll be able to sustain in the market. So the trading for the US session. So already I have the position which are taken during that of the European session. So it is not advisable to add more position. Even this was over trading. According to me, you should not take position for more than one currency or two currencies at a given time. After booking profit, only you can enter into another currency, even though there are trading opportunities. Because if you commit such positions, when the market goes against, it may lead to over trading. All the positions will erode your equity. And when your equity is very limited, you find that you become helpless. And if it is hedged, we need to use certain advanced trading techniques of how to close the hedging and keep another hedge order. So we have to necessarily handle the hedging in a different way when you have gone in for over trading. So it is not so easy using the hedging. And there are some people in what happens, you know, they simply take the position. And when the extreme level comes, when the usable margin is a few hundred dollars, whereas the equity size was about $40,000 to $60,000, and they hedge market all the positions and contact me how to handle the hedge. You know, that is a different strategy. We cannot close all the hedging simultaneously. We have to take only one or two positions at a given time with the available usable margin and try to handle that and try to close those positions. And during the next cycle, we have to pass space with the other pairs and try to earn that way we'll be able to close one by one because it is very easy to commit a blunder. But to unfold it and make it as a straight trade and make it as a net profit trade, it takes several days and the platforms will be charging the overnight interest. So we have to understand all those factors and simply telling that I have blown that account two, three times. That is not a greatness how you handle during such times and how you make it as a healthy account afterwards from such a distressed condition. 
there comes the skill set. No? So try to understand that using the hedging is not that you do not know trading, but if you use the hedging, we will be always limiting the risk at a given time. Now, let me answer to the questions which are asked because there is going to be another webinar, so I cannot take more time this time. I will try to answer the questions. Okay, MRC, uh, live market code page spread between high and the low. This is the current high and the low on, on what chart? Okay. If you look into that of the live market code page, you come across the highs and the lows which are set. And if you look into that of the chart, invariably what happens, it takes 30 minutes average and try to fix it. If it is a 30 minutes chart, if it becomes a 10 minutes chart, then 10 minutes average and fix it and try to show a slight line above as the noise. And what happens when you go in for a longer time frame, you don't find the exact high of the market. Only if you go in for a tick chart, we'll know what is the real high during that time. Suppose I kept a yeah, stop at 1.3408, my stop would have been filled, but the chart it will show only 1.3405. About two, three pips variation will be there. So if you look into that of the live market code page, exact high. And you know that in the live market code page, there are pages wherein you find the, the decimal also. And that will give the more accurate conditions. And also you can find in your own trading platform, the highs and the lows. And try to set it to that of the GMT time frame. This is New York time, but trying to set it to that of the GMT time, then you will be able to really understand how the market is making the moves based on the session timings. Then you will be able to understand that what I am trying to tell you is a reality. In it, please may you explain the column entitled time live market. Okay, in the live market put page, the column shows the New York time, the local time of New York is shown because I requested the uh, code provider to change it to GMP earlier. They have been giving it in GMP since they found that many of the traders are using it, they changed to New York time. So I find it extremely difficult to find a suitable live market code page, but still a combination of this is working. So we have to outsmart. You know, people will try to give a lot of restrictions for us, but still we should be able to outsmart. There comes our skill set. Then Pista, do incorporate London market opening and the closing volatility in your trading strategy. Not at all, sir. Because see, uh, sometimes people will say that it is a London market closing and the opening time. And also the uh, when during that of the New York session or when it is uh, during that of the US session by 1630 GMT, they will say simply because of London closing, the market is reacting. On certain times, they will give such attributes and make such moves. On certain other time, they don't do it. So you won't be able to uh, consistently use it as a tool for us to make an understanding. And what is more important is the session start time, the gap time of all the sessions, because the player follow that. So if you follow the same, we'll be able to read their intentions. So when the players talk in Greek, it is better to learn Greek and try to understand what they are talking. Instead, if I try to uh, speak in English and try to get an interpretation or translations, etc., I am bound to lose the main content. So we have to read their intentions. You know, It is something like when a person is coming to the shop and trying to do the shopping and they go in for a bargain with the other owner of the shop, you know the owner of the shop try to find the intention of the person, whether he has come here for window shopping or he has got a genuine interest of buying, then he enters into that of the bargain. Because in some shops, you find bargain is permitted. Then there you come across such things happen. So the 
shopkeeper reads the intentions of the shop they buy it and then accordingly he will just modify the price if the shop suppose it is a toy shop and he wants to sell the toy and you can go in for a bargain but you go with your kid and your kid says that i want the toy this is my toy the already the kid has taken the toy and kept it then the shopkeeper will not reduce the price you know that and so we can easily read the intentions of human and there comes our skill set if you want to become successful uh, in life we need to read the true intentions of our friends our relatives and our belongings etc then we will not get cheated again and again otherwise we will continue to become surprised when unexpected things happen in life then in his quote question i have seen that your focus is always especially accurate with the hero uh, do you prepare it specially for this pair not at all i prepare it for the us dollar and all the pairs are expected to move against and also give uh, the contrary moves happening in the market and accordingly i try to give the levels then guna uh, then can be change the timings in the mt4 uh, i am not very sure about it sir you have to ask your platform providers whether you are permitted to change the timings in the mt4 then any uh, why is the time on live market code page different from different currency pairs no that is actually uh, the updates so the timing differ they go in for an update whenever a update comes then it gets updated whenever the market is stagnant you don't find that update that is why you come across variation in that of the seconds not in minutes only in seconds so you may come across in the first update because the uh, the applet is being de- developed in such a way it will update every 3 seconds or every 5 seconds and things like that and during that 5 seconds if the price is not altered then it will not show the new time that's what happens but you need not bother about the seconds you can focus on that of the minutes that accurate study is not needed because we are only deciding with regard to the trading decisions and also exiting of the positions so we don't require such Uh, find to study with regard to the seconds in the market don't try to focus more on those things then you become more tensed you, know, you do a relaxed to trading i always tell people that trade at ease then you find consistently you are able to make money because of the impulsiveness because of the market fear because of the greed we lose money so control your emotions how you can control your emotions simply drink enough water and dilute all the endocrine gland secretions which are mixed with that of the blood which make you to become emotional and how what is the triggering factor for emotion the surprise so when you expect euro to come down instead it has gone up it becomes a surprise and immediately you find your endocrine and secrete and there the hormones are added to the the blood and which influences the brain then the brain goes with the regard to that of the decision making of the endocrine glands so that is why we should never allow the endocrine glands to dominate the brain then the brain takes distress decisions and once you dilute the hormones by taking enough water they are all water soluble you find that the blood becomes diluted automatically you don't get emotions at all suppose you get angry there is no point in hitting the computer or hitting the tables instead you drink enough water then you find that it gets diluted in a matter of over 2 3 minutes or 5 minutes and later on you will be wondering where the anger has gone where the fear has gone then you will be able to sensibly look into it okay and especially at that time you look into that of the net change so they hardly made about 12 pips or hardly made about 15 pips it's not a big deal at all no? 
making a swing is part of the game in the market so they are not gone against you in a big way instead they just made one brief upward stop and before making for the slide so it just you handle it using the hedge order so that you were not perturbed then you do sensible trade always keep in mind when i take the position i should close the position before adding for the positions and so that you will be able to preserve your equity nicely and you will be able to consistently earn money from the other market okay then the last question and is uh, what is the direction for usdn from 102 it is expected to go up and you will see by tomorrow uh, usdn going above the 103 and above okay so i'll wind up the webinar because there is going to be another webinar after this so these are all the pending positions and you can follow the pending positions what happened to those positions later on during the day and you will be able to see that during the year so we are in the money and then later on we can close the positions and think of the trade for the next week so i take this opportunity to thank fx trade for allowing me to present three webinars today exclusively for the benefit of the small traders who cannot afford to subscribe for any of the forecast for anybody for the matter any advices or analysis and i want i thought that they should also be benefited and they should also earn money because they are the needy people and they need the forecast in such a way and they should be able to generate the forecast on their own that is why it takes so much of time in explaining to you people and the only intention is everybody should live in this world and we should not become competitors among the rest of them so uh, my contact details are here and you can contact me at any time and i'll be willing to answer to those questions which you ask and i'll come back on monday and give the forecast for the next week as usual and every week we will see how exactly they are making the moves in the market so i take this opportunity to thank everybody who has come here and listen to my talk and those who are listening to the other recorded webinars thank you one and all wish you all very happy weekend and also profitable trade see you next week